it's Kathy from Fieldwork Connections. I'm at Long Reef today, Fisherman's Beach. There's Long Reef behind me. Um, and I am meeting some students, uh, some Year 12 students, to look at ecosystems and global biodiversity. Um, and I'm just having a look at the kelp situation down here and what is pushing up. So it is not low tide yet, but look at it all just hanging around out here. Um, it's been broken off the rocks. I'm assuming during um, ex-tropical cyclone Alfred, uh, when that was happening to the north of us, there would have been a lot of um, wave action happening on the Great Southern Reef. So it's good to see all this kelp washing up so that we can investigate to see um, the composition of what this beach rack is made up of um, and think about the biodiversity and the importance that the Great Southern Reef provides for us here in Sydney. They are some dark clouds. Let's hope the weather holds. When we're thinking about the location of Long Reef and where the Great Southern Reef exists here at Long Reef, we can't actually see it here on the land, but it is just out here in the shallow rocky areas off Long Reef. Um, and it has all that beautiful kelp growing in the forests just below the surface. Um, so if you bring students on this field work with me, they won't be going swimming, they won't be going snorkeling, but we can still uh, understand a lot about the ecosystem here on the beach. And then when the tide goes down a little bit and at low tide, we will go out here on this part of the rock platform to have a look at the biodiversity in this kind of neighboring community and think about a little bit of the overlap and biodiversity between those two places. Yes, this is field work and we will be collecting primary data and I'm going to show you a few of those things that we're doing today. This is a really good place to start because you can see the kelp is washing up here on the beach at low tide. I'll take the students down there. Oh. <laughs> Daddy, it's just kelp. All right, so we're pulling out all the kelp from inside this quadrat and then we're going to work out the percentages after we've identified the different kinds of seaweed. So you've divided it into your piles. That's our piles. So this is your... That's our brown. Your, yep. That's Kelp. So we're going to look this one up because I don't think that one's on the sheet. And you've got red. You've got one tiny little piece. Is this of the Neptune's necklace? Was that in there? Where? Oh, that's, that's a separate one. Yeah, okay. that's, that's gonna like, be all look, through look, in there. Guys, right, so we're gonna have to. Marking out our quadrat for microplastic survey. You might want to leave something at the corner so that you know where it goes. Like maybe this. Yeah, you want to leave that like that. Can you see any microplastics in there to start with? Anything? What's that white bit there? Is it a bit of cuttlefish? Oh yeah, that's cuttlefish. That's What's natural. That's natural. Oh, it's any fishing line. You can spend a bit of time. Remember, they're microplastics. They're tiny. Yeah, micro tiny. Instead of sticking sticks in the sand, maybe just like look on the surface. It's now low tide and the students are coming out onto the rock platform to have a look at the biodiversity out here and think about the different species that might be living both here and in the kelp forest. But we are also respecting the rules of Long Reef. We are not putting anything in tubs, we're not capturing anything. Um, we are keeping ourselves safe and also um, keeping the, the guidelines of the um, marine park that is out here. They see oh, stars? Oh. Yeah, like five pointed star, like that. Oh, okay. There's quite a few of them. There was a crab, but it's gone. Yeah. So this is the turban snail and this is the animal itself. Like it's like a, it's just like a garden snail, but it's got this operculum, the cover on it, and then it closes it up like that um, if it's left out of the water and it traps the water inside it so it doesn't dry out. Oh, that's actually kind of small. Yeah. 
and they would live down in the kelp forest as well. It's just in here. Look, see, it's white. It's called a nudibranch. It's kind of like oh, a mini sea oh slug. Oh, that's cool. There's like a oh sea slug snail over here. He's like backed himself into a corner here. How big? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What's this thing? We're using the uh, ecosystem cards from the GTA, which are a fantastic resource, and building a food web um, for the Great Southern Reef and what we think might be living out there. And this. Identified the levels. But can you figure out which one's eating which species? Alex. And how are we going to do that? Because on the bottom left of each of these cards, it says predator, so like the prey. rock lobster, predator, octopus. I can't even read that, but prey is the crabs. And the prey is smaller fish. There you go. Um, yeah. Uh, where the waves are coming in, and we'll just sit it in there for a few minutes. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You just hold on to the rope. <laughs> the waves are going to take it around a bit. Yeah, and then just fill up the little jar.